Well, this is chapter 10, the last official chapter of uh, statistics. Uh, it's on correlation and regression. Now, um, correlation is to show that um, one value is somehow associated with another. That's what it says here. Um, that there's meaning. One, rep one, if there's correlation, then we can use this to predict other values in this range of um, information data that we have. And so you know there's t several different types but we're just going to talk about linear correlation um you know where we have a straight line affecting so, so one ha one value it somehow notice the word somehow uh, is associated with another we don't know how and it's not going to prove anything so positive correlation uh has an upward trend okay so that's all it means is that it's going up Negative relation, just correlation, just shows that there's a downward trend in the data. Okay, as one value gets bigger, the other value gets smaller. That's all it says. Then there's zero correlation, where we can have a flat line, or we can have uh, dots going all over the place. Uh, zero correlation also can occur if we have nonlinear correlation. You know, where we have a sine curve or a a parabola, these could create zero correlations, but there really is a correlation. There's a correlation on this side, and there's a negative one on this side, and there's a positive one on this side. They cancel out, um, but so we can use other things, but we're not interested in nonlinear -cor non correlation at the moment, so we're not going to talk about it. Now, <coughs> the book gives you this really um, fancy formula. Um, n times the quantity times the sum of x, y minus uh, the sum of x times the sum of y all divided by the square root of n times uh, x the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared times the square root of the sum of n times the sum of y squared minus the sum of y squared. Now that's really great, but you're not going to be expected to do it. Uh, that leads you to your calculator does this which is the sum of the z scores of x times the z scores of y divided by n minus 1. This is what your calculator does, and what um, Excel does, what uh, a mini tab does, and this is you know how it's calculated. Again, you're probably not going to be asked to calculate these things. The big things you need to know are that r, which is the, the, the um, letter that we use to represent correlation, I don't know why, um, but <laughs> and eventually we're going to get to rho, which is the population correlation. But r has to always be between negative 1 and 1. If you get something bigger than 1 or something smaller than negative 1, you messed it up. All right. So make sure that when you put on your tests, you know, and ask for correlation, it has to be between negative 1 and 1. OK, so these occur. Um, x and y values change scale. Oops the r will remain the same. So if we go from feet to inches, doesn't matter, the r value will stay the same. If we go from feet to meters, it will stay the same. It doesn't matter if we switch x and y's uh, values, if you know the r value will stay the same. And it only measures linear relationships. So we're talking about positive linear or negative linear relationships. If we have anything else, we can't use R. <coughs> and it's sensitive to outliers, because uh, if we have a, a whole bunch of small numbers going down and then a large number going up, it will bring our R value up positive. It will actually change um, what your correlation coefficient is by having a, a really large outlier. So we have to take those into consideration when we're dealing with uh, linear relationships. Now, so R tells us, you know, has a positive and negative, tells us which direction the uh, relationship is. When we square it, we get a proportion. And uh, what this is, is this tells us um, how much variation of Y is explained by the X value. You know, we don't necessarily know which one is which doesn't tell us any of those things, but it tells us how much is explained by it. It gives us a proportion. <coughs> um, errors, one of the biggest things, uh, correlation and causality. One, just because we have correlation doesn't mean that 
uh, we have causality because we may be looking at it in the wrong order. Um, say height and weight, there's correlation, but we may say, well, gee, height causes, you know, if, we, if we're using weight as the x value and height as the y value, we we're saying, well, the heavier you are, the taller you are. Well, that doesn't make it necessarily work, <laughs> you know, but the taller you are, the heavier you usually are. The, so we have it, we have it backwards. Um, <coughs> there may be averages that we've been using, and that hides our variation, you know, because we've shrunk down all the data to a single number, and we have a whole bunch of data, averages of data. Well, that, uh, vary, since there's less variation, there's a higher R, higher correlation. <coughs> and other things we may have, we may say, well, we have you know, no correlation, but it's not no nonlinear correlation. So there may be a sine curve or a parabola that is going on. <coughs> okay, so after we get our R, we need to test whether or not there is actually correlation in there. So we have a hypothesis test. A hypothesis is that rho, which is looks like a P, yes, I understand it looks like a P, but it's the Greek letter R, equals zero. This says that there is no correlation. That's our null hypothesis. Remember, our null hypothesis always has an equal sign. Go back and look at test seven. If you got it wrong, that's why. <laughs> and our alternative is always going to be that there is not equal to zero because all we care about is that there is a correlation. Our R is going to be positive or negative, so that tells us whether or not there's going to be it's up, up or down. We don't care. We just want to know that there is some correlation that goes on. <clears throat> and we have a test statistic. We use t, okay, with uh, and the test statistic is t is equal to r divided by the square root of one minus r squared over n minus two. Okay, so we can plug that in, get our t value with the degrees of freedom of negative two. Now, um, if you look in your book, it is table A6, which is on page, um, Seven hundred and sixty. Okay, that has um, n's, uh, you know, varying sizes all the way up through a hundred, and it has alphas of 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So this gives us the um, critical values that we compare. We can just compare our R against, and if our R is um, greater than those, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it's not, then we fail to reject. So it's a very simple test, actually, because we already have a tables. I'll show you how to do it in um, on your calculator, but Excel does not do this. So if you're using Excel to do your statistics, uh, you'll have to use the table on page 760. <coughs> so if we reject the null hypothesis, then there is evidence that there's a linear correlation, and the R will tell us whether it's positive or negative. So that's correlation. The second part of the chapter is regression. Now we use they're kind of tied together. If there is re correlation, then we want to be able to say, well, can we use this this information data to predict other values? And we do that with regression. So linear regression, also called um, regression equation or regression line, um, prediction equation. It's really just an algebraic relationship between two variables. So we're getting a slope, we're getting a y-intercept, and we're putting together an y equals mx plus b equation, basically. They give you different letters, but it's the same stuff. It's algebra 1. <coughs> so our x variable is independent. It's a predictor variable. It's explanatory variable. Those are all different terms that you may see thrown in there. Um, it's just the x variable, and it's always been that way. Okay, x has always been the independent variable. Y is the dependent or response variable. Okay, remember y goes vertical, x goes horizontal on your axes. Um, one thing you'll need, you'll note is that all, uh, virtually all values that you will use are greater than zero. <laughs> so you're only going to be using the first quadrant of a graph. Okay, the formula that they give you is y hat, because it's a predicted value, is equal to b0, which is the uh, y-intercept, plus b1x, where b1 is your slope. 
yes, I, I realize it's simple. It's, it's different than what you used before. It's not y equals mx plus b, but it's the same concept. Sometimes you'll actually see a and b, and you know they're all they different places use different things, but they're all basically trying to tell you the same thing. B1 is calculated as r times the standard error of y divided by the standard error of x. Notice y over x slope. And B0 is calculated by the mean of the y minus B1 times the mean of x. So we use these because this value will be on the line. <coughs> we use it to calc and we know the slope. We use it to calculate the intercept. Remember, as long as you know the slope and a point, you can calculate the y intercept. So that's what you're doing. You're going to use a calculator to do this, so you know don't worry about they're not going to ask you to do this by hand. So regression equation uh, is for prediction only if it is a good model. Notice only if it is a good model. How do we know if it's a good model? Does the line fit the scatter plot? You know, do we have a graph that um, goes outside? If we have, if we notice there is. Um, um, well, here on page 543, they've given an extra point in the pizza subway. So the first graph on page 543, notice the line goes up in that makes the data that makes sense. But here in the second graph, we actually have a negative line because what happened was we gave away um, free tokens on the um, subway. So it changed the graph, and it really doesn't look right. Okay, the points don't really match up with the the graph, so it doesn't really fit the scatter plot. Um, is there a strong correlation? So we've done our R test to see is there a, is there a test of having correlation? You know, can we test it? So if that works, if we have a, if we have an R that is passable, then we use we can use the regression. And are we predicting within the scope of the data? So we don't want to we can't really predict too much outside of the data. And there's actually a test uh, to calculate the interval of that, and we're not going to get into it. Um, but you know, basically, we're trying to make sure that our, if your data is too far outside of the range of, if you're predicting on a point that's too far out of the range of your data, you're probably not going to be able to get a very good result. But if you're inside the data, it's fine. <coughs> so if all of those things answer yes, you can use the regression line to predict. If you answer no to some of, to one of those, then use the mean of the y value as the predictor value. That's all. You know, that's the two things. So you know, you find out the the mean of the y's. That's the prediction value because that's the best value you have. So outliers, initial influential points, residual and uh, residual plots, and least squares. So these are things that uh, are affect correlation and regression. Um, least squares is another term for the regression equation because what you're trying to do is you're, if you look at this box here, we'll get to it. Um, I'll get to it in a second. So um, let me start with the first thing. We have outliers and influential points. Outliers, notice on this graph, most of these points lie close to our line, except for this one. Okay, this line is the furthest from this point is the furthest from the line. It is a possible outlier, and the outliers change our regression line. Okay, so that causes issues. All right, and <coughs> because of this, we may have we may have a change in our. If we remove this, we may have a better or worse. Uh, correlation, and therefore we might not be able to use this. We'll definitely get a different slope, so our regression line and our correlations will change if this point is removed. And that's <coughs> because outliers are, can be so dramatic, they can have a vast influence on our regression. Again, look on page 543, notice our regression line is negative as it compared on the second uh, graph as opposed to the first graph. So, because that point has been so, is so drastic, it's influential. It's actually changed our correlation and our regression line vastly, and so therefore, if we were to take it out, we would get back to a, a normal standard. Um, residuals. 
Residuals are what's left over, okay? And there's different pot, plots for residual plots. And notice we want to have something that has no trend to it, okay? We don't want to see a pattern. We don't want to see this here has a uh, parabola pattern. This here, they're getting larger as we get further away, further into the data. And this one here, um, they're kind of making a little pattern here. We want to have something that, that is a really scatter plot when we plot our, our, our residuals. That tells us we have a good graph. And least squares is, like I said, just another term for um, the regression line. What it is is the, the concept that uh, the, if we add up the sum of the squares of our residuals, it's the smallest value that we can get. And that's how we know we have the best line. You know, it, you know, we don't use it. We don't do this math anymore. But it, that's the, the regression line. It, you may hear is the least squares uh, formula, and so that's all it's saying is that we're finding the smallest amount of square space between the residual and the the plot. And you know, we find our, our residuals. We square them, add them up. The smallest value sum of area will give us our best regression line. So <coughs> there's things you need to know. We have variation. The total variation is the distance between the mean of the y value and the actual value. They should, because we have a mean, they, we're using that as a predictor, they should all be at that mean. Well, they're not. So the distance between them is the total variation between the actual value and the mean value. Now, the part that's explained is based on our y. So our regression line explains some of it. Okay, Our r squared, if we were going to calculate this, this is the next thing we're getting into, our, the distance between the mean and the y of the mean of the y and the regression line is explained because based on our r. Our unexplained variation is the distance between the regression line and the actual point. Okay, so we expect to have some value, certain value, and then what happens is we get a different value, and so those can be positive or negative. But we have unexplained variations. Okay, and our r squared explains how much of y is explained by x, and it's in a percent. And you know we have a, another formula here: r squared is equal to the explained variation divided by our total variation, or you know the sum of y minus the actual y minus the mean squared divided by y hat minus oops I think I have those backwards I have those upside down I am completely sorry it's the sum of y hat minus y bar over the sum of y minus y bar I have those upside down in this graph uh, squared <coughs> so that'll, that's another way to al calculate r squared, and then we can calculate r. So it's a way to go backwards. Um, and again, I, you're not going to do this by hand, so you know don't worry about the formula. Um, but it is there just for your benefit. So that's it.